What's up? What's up? What's up, people? Gonna try this this shit again, man. Back again, man. Excellent podcast. I'm your host, Kituko X Kihende. Yes, your international hustler, baby. Real life, real shit. In the flesh, real shit. Ain't nobody doing it, man. Ain't nobody doing it like this. I don't care what nobody say. Ain't nobody doing it. Give myself some props. Pat myself on the back. Let's get it. Hey, though, man. I just did this live. I think my mic was off. I believe it. I don't know what the fuck. Excuse me, Lane, but I got pissed off. I deleted it, and we back again, though. But this live, man, this live is about the Lord, the Lord's canon, man. The Lord's canon. We talked about her for years and years and years. I hadn't even, I ain't even really uh, looked at uh, um, her videos in a minute. You know, she got audio books. She got, I got a YouTube channel and stuff. It's in the link. I'm be in the link. I got everything linked up. So y'all, I'm gonna try to make this quick. So if y'all want to do in, delve deeper into it, y'all just go follow the links and shit. Follow the follow the on um, the links. Oh, ton twist because I'm about pissed off, really. But yeah, the Lord Candy man, she she uh author. She done wrote, man, she done wrote I don't know how many books, about 18 or something. Books. She got done do past life regression. And she a hypnotist. Yeah. That's where she get her divine information from. Cause people, she she hypnotized people then. Other other spiritual beings come through. If y'all understand that, we're gonna get a little deep. It's gonna sound a little crazy. You gotta put that goddamn book up, that motherfucking Bible. Put that book up and just open your mind, man. Open your mind. You're gonna have to open your mind for this. I'm telling you. Cause you is not gonna understand nothing she's talking about with that crazy thinking, that closed mind shit. You gotta expand your consciousness, man. Expand your knowledge, man. Knowledge is power. So check this out. I'm going to show y'all. I'm going to do a quick video of what I put together earlier today. I'm going to show y'all this video right quick so y'all can get an idea who she is. Though. So hold up. Shit get crazy, man. Shit starts skipping. I'm finna try to hurry up through this shit, man. Here we go. Hold up. I'm going to share my screen. Hold up for a second, man. She be crazy, man. All right. I'm going to do it like this. Hope y'all can see this. Pull this up right here. Right quick. I'm going to play this shit, get it over with. Then we're going to look at the other videos, um, Life After Death and um got another video what's the other video um damn the convo the convoluted universe some shit like that but check this video out right here right quick man i'm gonna show they do this right quick for the for this shit start skipping or some shit man but hold up welcome back exodus family and if you're a new viewer kindly subscribe for more informative videos like this one do that now. Thanks everyone. Today, it's an honor and privilege to introduce you to a remarkable woman named Dolores Cannon. She was a renowned author, hypnotist, and past life regression therapist. She gained widespread recognition for her work in the field of metaphysics and spirituality, particularly through her research on past life regression and hypnotherapy. Dolores Cannon developed a unique hypnosis technique as quantum healing hypnosis technique, QHHT. Through QHHT, she claimed to access the client's past lives, higher self, and the subconscious mind to gain insights and facilitate healing. She wrote numerous books based on the knowledge and experiences gained through her sessions with clients. Some of her most well-known books include The Three Waves of Volunteers and the New Earth, Keepers of the Garden, Between Death and Life, and the Convoluted Universe series, among others. These books explore topics such as extraterrestrial beings, parallel universes, and the nature of reality, yes. drawing from the information obtained during her hypnosis sessions. 
Dolores Cannon's work has inspired and influenced many individuals in the spiritual and metaphysical community. While her ideas and concepts have been met with a range of reactions and interpretations, her contributions to the exploration of consciousness and the nature of reality continue to resonate with many people interested in these subjects. Dolores Cannon was highly knowledgeable about all things pertaining to life and the afterlife. She has the answers to all of your questions. All of them. Just follow the links provided to her website, YouTube page, and audio books, as you will find plenty of divine content, shall I say. Yes, plenty. Well, we've reached the end of this attention span video. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more captivating and educational videos like this. And remember, knowledge, knowledge is, is power. power. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching. <laughs> Okay. And do y'all know her? Have y'all ever heard of the De Lord Cannon before? Have you? Oh, okay, wait a minute. Go to bullshit. Hold up. Oh, my God. There you go. Good. Damn. My bad, y'all. Damn. Oh, did y'all even hear that? I don't know. But check this out. We're going to let, let y'all hear her talk a little bit so y'all can he hear how she talk, man. She deep, deep, deep. Probably a little too deep for y'all minds. I'm telling you, you got to. You got to. Let that shit go, man. Let that Bible shit go. Let all that shit go, man. Everything you done learned or you been programmed to know, let that shit go, man. Tell you. Let it go. Now I'm finna show y'all. I'm let we're gonna let her speak. And I'm gonna tell y'all something. Man, she she on my Kituko theory, man. You got to believe in reincarnation. And it ain't even nothing to believe in. Reincarnation is real. It's real, man. Too many cases, the shit real. To quit thinking that it ain't. But you got to believe in reincarnation to come up with the Kituko theory. But the Lord Cannon was on this shit years ago. That's probably why I thought about this shit, though, see. She like the only one that probably could even come up with this shit. But I'm going to tell you, though, we're going we're gonna to look at this life after death. Then we're going to play a little bit of this um, convoluted universe. And I'm going to go to the part where she's talking about my theory. So here we go. Let's get this. Let's get this on the screen right here. Let's get this up before this shit start fucking up. All right. Here we go. Okay, but I'm going to talk about my book about life after death. That's what I meant. It's We're going a little serious here for a little bit. Shit getting serious now. Because I, I talk at this also at ashrams all over the world. And they said it goes along perfectly with their teachings, with the Hindu religion. So I'm involved with other different religions too. Because it makes so much sense. <laughs> But in my work, when you do the past life regressions, in order to do it correctly, you must take the person through the death experience. Oh, I hear that. Hypnosis classes <clears throat> say, no, no, don't touch that. It's dangerous. It is not because I've done thousands and thousands of people. Thousands. And I've had them die in every way imaginable you could think of. And nobody's been harmed if you know what you're doing. You got to pay attention to what she's saying, man. Pay attention to what she's saying. Listen to what she's saying. She done done thousands, man. Thousands, not one or two or three. Thousands around the world, man. She started off with people. She she was doing uh, parallel regression. She got into UFOs, aliens and shit, or alien abduction. And then she got into, she got deeper and deeper. And these people went to contact her through these people when she was hypnotizing them. They speaking through them, talking through them and everything. Different languages sometimes and everything, though. Check this out. 
and that's why I know it can't hurt. But during all that time, the 30 years I've been doing the past life regressions steadily, I took so many people through the death experience because in the death experience, sometimes the answer for the problems in this lifetime, yeah. you know, <laughs> phobias, allergies, you can see where that would come from, the way they died in the other life, but also medical things that are wrong with the body go back to the way they died in the other lifetime. So all of this is very important. So I found by taking hundreds of people back to the past lives and bringing them back through the death experience, they all described it the same way. They all said the same thing. So this is not near death. This is what I'm going to tell you about is what they described as real death. What Real death. Quit guessing what y'all think and what happened. She got, she know exactly what happened after you passed. She know exactly what happened. This ain't near death. This is real death. She know exactly what's going on. This is not no joke. No joke. What really happens when you die and when you cross over? Because near death, you go so far. You have to. You have to come back. But this is what happens whenever you go all the way. And I usually give a longer lecture, so I'm going to try to stick to the main points, and then we'll see if you have any questions because I encompass just about everything you could possibly want to know in this, this subject. Exactly. She been doing this for 30 years, man. She been doing this shit for 30 years. You know she knows some shit. She just been building up information. Most of the information she says she don't even remember. She just, while, while they telling her, she just writing it down, though. She writing it down, she writing it down, getting all the information. She done wrote books, man, books on top of books. This lady be writing like three books at a time at one time. Like how you how you three books? Oh my goodness. Let go. Okay. I ain't gonna play that down. much. Check out. Well, people say this makes them to where they're not afraid anymore when they find these things out. I can and understand also they that. like to know if somebody has died, they want to know where they went. So these are important things to find out about. Okay, when the person goes through the death experience and they're dying, they said the first thing, the body, they feel very cold. Then the next instant, they're standing by the bed looking down at the body. The second. I know y'all done heard that before. Y'all done heard that before. You probably ain't, ain't gonna tell them about y'all. The, uh, they say it's just like getting up from one chair and sitting down in another chair. You just slide right out of the body. So they are standing next to the bed, looking down at the body, and they'll say, gee, I didn't know I looked that bad. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> and believe me, the time. last thing they'd want to do is go back into that body. Usually you heard it's sick it? or it's diseased, and there's no hope of it ever getting well. They don't want to go back to it. Because the next thing that comes into their mind is, hey, I'm out of there. Go anywhere I want. I can do anything I want. See, have y'all ever even thought about that shit? Even thought about it like that? Y'all don't even think about that, though. You see, a soul a soul ain't got no gender or nothing, though. That's another thing, too. That's why that will help me come up with the Katuko theory. But she own it, though. She already said my theory years ago. This video probably about seven years ago, I believe. But when you when you are so we, we ain't nothing but consciousness. We ain't nothing but consciousness. That's all we are, man. These vessels, man. That's always nothing else. Nothing else, man. We ain't nothing but consciousness. You can't kill consciousness. We immortal beings. We live forever. Forever, man telling you so that's what they want to do they want to go on they want to go home really it's the people who are left behind are the ones who are grieve about it they want them to stay with them but yeah. you really want them to be back in a body like that that most of the time is exactly. no hope for them think about it it's better to realize to let them go because when you hold on to it you're being selfish it's just for yourself Think about it. I don't want, I want to, I'm going to miss them. I want them to be with me. Have y'all ever thought about that? Being selfish. 
Let them go on. Let them go on. They they going back to the light, man. Going back to the source. You know. I don't know what I'll do without you. That kind of thing. It's a selfish thing, because really the parts I'm going to go through is you make a contract. Damn, you somebody just walked by. And in this contract, you also make an oh, exit. Get out plan. of the way. So all of this is planned before you ever come into the life. So the person is ready to go on. They have completed their mission. They have completed everything they're supposed to do. They don't know this consciously. Yeah, I'm finna smoke a cigarette part too. Of a plan. So the person don't say who is leaving doesn't understand that. It's time for them to go. They are going back home. Going and back so home. To continue with your life as part of your plan and your contract. Right. Everybody got a contract. And you know, I can't hang up. I'm going to play a little bit more of this. I don't want to get flat. I don't even know how you two are going to do me though. But I'm going to tell y'all though, gonna, this, this, this some more shit though, but she she talk about this. She speak on this shit in her books and on every everything though. But we got contracts and shit, man. We know we 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 decide everything before we get here, man. Everything, everything. We decide how we come and we decide how we pass, how we leave. I'm telling you, it sounds crazy, but I'm telling you it's the truth. Cut that shit out, everybody. It, it, it don't matter how dramatic it sounds. You pick your death. You pick the time when you leave these vessels, man. You pick that shit. You choose that shit. You choose how you come in. You choose how you go out. I'm telling you. Imagine. Imagine, guys. Imagine, guys. Imagine being just, just consciousness, what you is. You, you get blessed from the universe with this knowledge, man. With this knowledge, you get blessed from the universe, man. You is nothing but consciousness. That is it. You know how to maneuver in this world when you know what's going on. Period. That period. I don't care what nobody say. Listen to the listen to the, the Lord Cannon. She done talked to the spiritual beings and the beings above them. Real shit. Anyway, the first thing they want to they say is, oh boy, I'm out of here. I'm gonna get to leave. I can go home. And they I have found you are never alone. This is one of the greatest fears people have. They exactly. think when they die, they're going to be alone, going into the great unknown. That's not what happens. You that ain't are what never happened. alone. Never. You're never alone when you're alive either, but you don't realize that. Do y'all hear what she's saying, man? Listen what this lady's saying. You're never alone. Ever. In the physical plane or in the spiritual world. When you pass, it's always going to be somebody there. Remember, she finna explain it real good. Though. I'm going to try to play a little bit more of this, man. I'm telling you. Because when you come into a lifetime, you have a guardian angel, if you want to call it that, a guardian angel or a guide that is assigned to you specifically. Yes. And they have to be with you your entire lifetime. They have to take care of you. They have to be there for you. Guide and you. they love to help you, but they can't interfere. You they see? They can only help if you ask for help. You ask for help. Y'all, I've been saying this shit forever. This shit for real. They it laws in the cosmos. They got laws. They can't, they can't interfere with our physical world unless it's going to be destructive. Unless we finna blow up the planet or some shit. Telling you. Help. And if you do, boy, do they take over. But sometimes it can be a deceased relative that is assigned to you to be your guardian angel. But you think about have that. One. And that's a good and thing. If your life gets a little complicated, you may have more than one. You can have as many as four, all taking care of different things. And if your life takes a sudden turn in a different direction, Sometimes these guides will change places and another one will come in that has more expertise in your field that you're going into. So you always have somebody there. You see what I'm saying? They working, man. They working. They straight working out there. I told you they working. We've been new there, man. So y'all, when, when, you, when your loved one pass away, don't feel 
you gonna feel bad that they gone. You gonna feel bad that they gone, but you just, just understand what's going on in this shit. Though. If you understand what's going on, you will you will feel a whole lot better, man. Live on, cause they always watching, and you can always connect. Look at my lucid dream video. So whenever you actually die and leave the body, you'll always have someone. I call them the greeters. Someone will come to be, meet you and take you where you're supposed to go. Now, all of you have probably been with somebody dying in a hospital, and they see unseen people around the bed. Have you ever had that happen? Yes. Usually it's deceased relatives. I have heard of that they before. They see them standing around the bed. This is very real. Real. The doctors and the nurses try to say, well, it's just the drugs or the oxygen deprivation because they're, they're dying. They gon' them doctor gonna tell you lie cause they don't know shit. They don't know shit. It's a business. America is a corporation. United States of America is a corporation, and you the product. It's very real, and I've had other nurses say it happens a lot that they will see people there, and you notice they're always very happy. So and so is here, you know, and they know they're gonna go with them, husband, relative, oh, or whatever it is. So she if they start there, acting up. the guide or guardian angel will be there. But you'll always have somebody to take you where you're supposed to go. But look, I'm just going to, I got to stop it, man, before this shit get too crazy, though, man. But y'all hear the way she talking? Y'all, I'm going to put the link to this video and the other videos and shit what I'm about to play. All the video where I'm playing, the link going to be down there, though. But we're going to have to go to another video right now. Cause I see my shit already and start jumping and looking crazy. So, you know, we're just gonna start sharing that right quick. But y'all hear how she, y'all hear how she, how she talk though. That's why I get my shit from some of my shit, some of my shit. But if I want to get divine past, um, um, past life and shit, you talking about afterlife. And reincarnation and all that shit, I already believed in that though. But she confirming everything. She'll confirm everything without even think about. Because it's real, man. We the gods and goddesses. But I got one more video, man. I'm going to show y'all a little bit of this other video right quick before this shit start getting crazy. Hold up, here we go. Let's do this right quick. We're gonna we're gonna do this right quick, man. All right, y'all, check out this for this uh this she finna speak on another this one of her other other books though, the convoluted um universe and three waves of volunteers. And the new earth. She speak on a new earth and where earth gonna split in two. Look at the thumbnail. The old, the old earth people that they're doing bad and everything. They ain't even gonna know what's going on. The new earth, the good, good souls and shit. They're gonna split up. Let them they're gonna stay over there doing that bad. They won't even know that they're split up, but the good side gonna be it's gonna be good in the back. When the earth split up, man. It's, it's splitting up. Sound a little crazy, but it's real. You want you you don't even know what's going on. It's happening right now. But check out though. Check this out. I'm gonna let me play a little bit of this here. Then I'm gonna go to the part where she's talking about my Kituko theory, so y'all can understand about this the LGBTQ plus community. Y'all can understand. Ooh, I don't know if you felt it, but when I walked into this room. Boy, I was hit by a lot of energy. <laughs> I don't know if you're feeling it or not. I don't need it. The speaker doesn't need it. <laughs> you know. But that's what my daughter was saying. Look at all the energy we've been generating here this whole weekend. And so I guess it's accumulating. Okay. Her daughter, she passed on 2014. Her daughter, um, what I heard, she her daughter doing, I ain't even seen no videos of her daughter doing it, but my brother have them. But her daughter doing past life regression now. She doing what she doing. She taught her, she taught her everything. So I wonder if she is good as she, 
You see it though, but I don't know. When I walked in, I could feel it through my arms and everything. But I don't need it, so I need to get it out of here. So <laughs> off of me anyway, it can affect you guys. Okay, when I'm doing my sessions, I have an office over in Huntsville, and there's an awful lot of energy that accumulates in that office. You won't believe it. And uh, there are all kinds of strange things happen in there because of the energy. And I always say, oh, it's just them. You know, my little gremlins that like to play. <laughs> She's serious. So it's what it is here. It's an accumulation of energy, but it's a positive energy anyway. But sometimes when I'm speaking somewhere, I can feel it rolling off of the audience. Oh. See, that was she about energy. She, 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 she bad, man. Okay, well, I hope you're enjoying the conference. Yes. <laughs> We have a lot of good speakers and a lot of good authors. Okay. Now I'm going to be, oh, so I'm trying to figure out how to start on all of this. Uh, most of you know about my work and what I do, but I do want to give a little bit of explanation on this part that I'm. Hold up, hold up. Let me just pause it. Look at this picture, man. Somebody tell me where the niggas at, man. Where the Africans, man? Where the Africans at? That just don't make no sense. Where are they at, man? Where is they? What? Where, where is y'all? Look who getting the information. Look who getting the information. It take motherfuckers like me to goddamn bring this shit to y'all. Y'all can the shit out there. Everything out there. It's 2023. Everything is out there. Y'all niggas just look. Look at this shit. They own they shit, though. They teaching this shit. They going to teach this shit to their kids, and they ain't going to tell y'all shit. They teaching this shit to their kids and everybody. Look at that shit. I don't see not one nigga. Not one African. Excuse me. That don't make no sense. I keep referring to they, so most of those who don't know will understand what I'm talking about. But I've been doing the hypnosis for 40 years. And I've been doing the past life uh, sessions and regressions for 30 years. So I do the therapy and the counseling. People come from the world, that little town in Huntsville, to have a session. She's been hypnotizing people for 40 years and doing past life regression for 30 years. Man. So it just keeps growing and growing. But during that 30 years, I developed my own technique. That is not like any other hypnosis technique out there. And that's what I'm teaching now all over the world because it is uh, very dynamic and powerful. But what I learned when I was putting this together and it evolved, I found out how to contact this part that is so powerful. And that's the one that I get the information from. Now, most listen. Is you go through a past life and that's it. Now, now she finna get into some shit right quick. I can't play the whole video, man. This video is an hour and 30 minutes. I can't play the whole video, but I got the link to the video, y'all. Check out the video. Check out her YouTube page, her, her website. I got a link to all her audio books, all that shit. But she finna get into the, the, to the entity where she get her information from while she doing past life regression. It deep, man. You won't, or you will not understand this shit with that closed mind and shit. And a lot of times the client, when they leave, they'll say, well, it was interesting. Ancient Greece, ancient Egypt. But what does this have to do with my life now? A lot of hypnotists don't know how to tie it together and how to take it further. Yeah, you see what she do? She go further than other hypnotists. They what, they what make her so bad, though. This why is she who she is, though. That's why she's speaking to her at a conferences all around the world where she was all around the world speaking to other races besides you niggas, man. Besides African, y'all don't even be there, y'all. Nothing. Y'all know nothing about that woman. And she got all your answers. Y'all know nothing. It's sad, man. Shit's sad as fuck, man. But she finna, she explaining why she the best. Why she was the best. So when I do my work, 
the past life regression is the tip of the iceberg. That's just the very beginning because there's so much more you can find out. So I found a way to contact what I call the subconscious. Uh -oh. And it's not the subconscious the way the psychiatrists define it. Uh, and I've had arguments with a psychiatrist well, she's skipping, look like. about this because they don't agree with me. Uh -oh. But the, the, uh, the subconscious. Well, y'all, I don't know if I'm ready to play the whole video because shit already going crazy, man. Let me fast forward a little bit, though. way it speaks it's always the same i want to say entity it's too bigger than that but people have taken my class and said if it had it happened they'll say yeah i contacted the subconscious and i have to say with a capital s because it is so powerful when it comes through but how can you explain it it comes through everybody i work with and nobody knows what i'm looking for they come to me with problems, and I'm helping them with that. But it's always the same voice, the same definitions, the same terminology. Doesn't make any difference where I speak to them anywhere in the world. She's talking about the people that speaking to her through the through the, her clients. That what she's talking about. The people that speaking through to her through her clients. She's talking about these entities. They ain't even on the planet. You see what I'm saying? Open your minds up. And as part of this, this is how I get my information that I write about. A lot of times it is the entire session. They will turn into the part I need. But a lot of times toward the end of the session, and I can be in England having a session. Toward the end of the session, this voice will come through. They never interrupt the therapy, but toward the end, it'll come through and say, Dolores, this is the next piece of information you need for your next book. And they'll chart giving me a theory that I haven't even heard of before. And I'll say, and see, that's probably why she ended up writing. So that's why she write, wrote so many books, but that's why she started off, she'll write, be writing about three books at a time because she only even be through. She's still getting information from these people. I mean, from the entities. I say, okay. <laughs> And then a couple of weeks later, I'll be back in the States doing somebody else. It'll happen again. And they give me more information about the theory they've just given me. So it's like a continuing thing. And some of these people will go home and they'll uh, email me or call me and they'll say, what was that voice at the end of the tape? Because it definitely wasn't them. So I See, the people even hear the voices and shit. <laughs> I heard they can speak any language they need to. I call them they because they have become so powerful in my life. And it's not channeling because this is something much bigger than that. That because it's not coming through one person, it's coming through many, many people. So that's what my books, especially the new ones now, the Convoluted Universe series, are coming from the fact that accumulation of the material that they keep giving me. And that um convoluted universe, man, it it like I think it's five of them books, man. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I believe it's five of them audio books, man. Y'all listen to them. Y'all see she gonna get she get deeper and deeper. She running through it right quick. She just going through it right quick, right quick right now. But she gonna she get real deeper into the in the books and in the audio books and shit. Man. And other videos. And every time I think I got it all, there's nothing more they can possibly tell me. Something new comes out through somebody else, and I'm off on another theory. Uh, that's how the convoluted universe material came about, because when I was doing the custodians, that was my 20 years of working with the UFOs and the abduction cases. And the voices began to come through then, but those were the ETs were giving me information about their planets, about how their ships operated and uh, why they were coming. This is one of the reasons that I did want to uh, print Don's books because he was- Y'all hear that? Did y'all hear what she just said? <laughs> this shit is real, man, real shit. 
That's why any question you anybody got, man, she got the answer, man. She done did videos and Validating everything. Validating all the things that I've written about that I found this way. And to me, that shows there's something to it if it's coming from other directions, the same material. Yes. Because they gave me the same story of the seeding of the planet Earth, how life began, how they've been taking care of us since the beginning of time. But it began to go in different directions, away from UFOs and abductions, and began to get into complicated metaphysics. That's when I started writing the Convoluted Universe series. But what I'm getting now, I could never have understood 30 years ago when I started out. I've been evolving and growing the whole time. See, they will, they evolving. She evolving with it, with the time, with everything, though. See, they know this, though, see. They know this information, so they didn't want to give her too much too early. I've written 15 books now, and some people say they want to read the books in the order I wrote them so they can see how I evolved and how I changed as I went along. Because I began to, in the very beginning 30 years ago. I'm going to fast forward this a little bit, man. In your way, and you would sabotage it. So they know. So I had this man, one of the questions he wanted to know was what was his purpose? Why was he here? They said, we can't tell you, it's not time. But they said, oh, we wish we could because you don't know what we see. But they said, consider he is where you were 20 years ago. You don't give a baby a three course meal. You start a baby out on milk, cereal, crushed vegetables, you don't give them a steak. Exactly, see? So that's the same idea. You have to evolve at the stage your mind is. Exactly, so exactly. You see? You got to evolve through knowledge, man, through knowledge. That's what it's all about, man. So after that, I began to understand I could not have handled the steak that I'm getting now 30 years ago I would have blown my mind. I would have just said, nope, it's too complicated. I don't want anything to do with it. So over the years, they have been giving me more and more complicated information. You heard that? We're going to skip up a little bit more. I don't know what she's about to say now, but. Yeah. So there's going to be more in the convoluted series. I've already pulled out all the information about UFOs. I've been taking that out of the last three books. Because even that is going in a different direction, a different way of understanding, a totally new perspective. So I'm going to put that in a separate book. I'm going to put three more books right now, anyway. But I was told. Man, I'm skipping. It's skipping, man. Hold on. Let me go. Let go up a little bit more. Golly, man. What's going on? A video skip. Look at me. Look at this shit. They can't even take care of themselves. How are they going to handle something like this? So they were really worried about it. So that's when they began monitoring us to see what we're going to be doing with this. And they don't like it. They're very unhappy with what we're doing. And they said, we have to change. We can't allow this to go on because we could get to the point where we could destroy the world. What she's talking about now is goddamn um, bombs and shit. Them bombs that were going off, they started going off. When that, that was, what, 1940s or some shit? Well, I think I did some the atomic bomb, the Hiroshima, all that shit. They seen all that shit, though. They kind That's when they kind of came up with a plan. But, yeah. With what we were doing. And they said they can't allow that to happen. Now, the, the divine directive is just like fear. You cannot interfere with a developing civilization. They must, it's a planet of free will. They must make their messes, they must make their mistakes, and they just stand back and shake their heads, but they can't interfere because we have been given permission to do whatever we want. But if it gets to the point that we're going to blow up the world, yes. they said it would send reverberations out through space, we would disrupt other civilizations that we're not even aware of not only in our galaxy, in our solar system, our universe, but also in other dimensions, because the vibrations would be tremendous. All right. 
she got she getting real deep. But let's I'm 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 gonna play another little section, man, because I don't know what my shit skipping got me skipping and shit. But hold on, let's go to a little bit more. Let's see what she's talking about right here. Let's see what she's talking about. You just want to do what they have to do and get out again. She's talking about reincarnation now. Here, most of these people live just very ordinary lives. They don't, just don't make any waves. But they're the ones who are uh, holding the energy that is going to change the world. They act as channels of um, antennas, they said, for the energy. Okay, these I got to stop. It. Nonchalant, they are, I got to pause it. I got to stop. I got to stop it. I got to stop it. I got to stop it and throw the fuck up. Oh, my fucking goodness. What the fuck? Well, she froze up on me, man. I don't know what's going on. The computer don't start acting up. I'm going to find out. I turned everything off, too. But I'm finna go to the park. It's her theory, but I'm going to get to her. But it's all good. I, I did think of this shit, though. But look, I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to go to the part where she talking about, where she talking about reincarnation. Bam, right here. Hold up, hold up. We'll start it right here since everything. Did I freeze up? Am I froze? The fuck going on here, man? This thing ain't going, man. This they really gonna make me stop doing this shit, man. To keep on. But let go to um. I'm finna share this share my screen one more time. I'm finna let y'all hear this quick. This gonna be real quick, and then I'm out of here, man. I'm out of here. I'm out of here after this. Out of here. It's already jumping. It do this when I share my screen, man. I see now. It doing it when I share my screen, man. I don't even know if I'm ready to do this, man. I'm finna try to do this, man. God damn. I'm going to try to play this a little bit, man. Y'all just check this out real quick. And we've all been it. We've all done it. But now we go into the humans. Okay. When you finally get to the human stage, what do you got to learn? Everything. Everything. <laughs> you have to be male and female many, many times. And when I say that, Heard that, usually people, you know, this. I've had men say, wait a minute, I've always been a man. What do you mean? I've the never been a woman. theory. But what would you learn if you were only one sex forever? I'm telling you, I thought about this shit. I wasn't even thinking about this little candy. I thought about this on my own. I came up with this shit. She is confirming what I'm talking about. You would learn what it would be like to be the opposite. You wouldn't be balanced. So if you've been one sex too many times, then they'll say, okay, it's time to be the other one now to learn what it's like to be on the opposite. This I've found is one of the reasons for homosexuality. And it makes perfect sense. There you go. You heard what she said? It makes perfect sense. And I'm telling you, it really do. It makes perfect sense to me. When I explain the Katuko theory to people, it makes perfect sense to everybody. I ain't talked to nobody yet that ain't got this shit. It's time to try the other role, and they don't feel comfortable with it. You hear men that say, I feel like I'm a woman trapped in a man's body because yeah. they're making this adjustment for the first time. 
So I had one man come up to me at a, at a lecture. He said, finally, something that makes sense. Okay, that's it. That's all I'm going to play. I'm done with that. We're going to stop that right there. Done with that. Do with that, though. But y'all heard, y'all heard what she said now. Don't act like y'all didn't hear that shit now. Act like y'all didn't hear that shit. It's straight up. But my thing is, just don't be pushing that shit on nobody, though. You know what I'm saying? We know what's going on. If y'all understand what's going on, these people really born, like, they born that way. They say they feel like they born gay or something. They really is. So most of them, I think at least by 80%, the rest of them, is, they choose, choose that shit. But y'all just don't push that shit on nobody, though. If somebody gay, y'all gonna, y'all gonna, it's gonna be a magnet. Y'all gonna be a magnet to each other. But y'all do that shit on y'all own shit. Just don't push it on nobody, though. That's all. But yeah, that was the Lord, the Lord's cannon, man. And I gotta get up out of here, man, cause this thing skipping. I don't know what it's doing, man. It's, it really pissed me off, really, though. But, you know what I'm saying? We out of here, man. Tuco X. I am your international hustler, man. We out of here, man. Y'all take it easy, man. Excellent podcast.